Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in. Hi, my name is Jack Hodges. Welcome back to my channel. I'm talking about building your own network. So, uh, I had an email from one of my viewers that said um, I've got to build a network for like 15 plus users. Uh, across two buildings, um, what's the best um, to use or how do I go about doing this? Quite straightforward. So today we're going to get very, this is a brief overall video, then we're going to do a series of small little videos afterwards, each day now going through this week, sort of showing you what you need to, um, what what need to buy, purchase, costs and stuff. And we'll talk about two different products today. We're going to talk about build your own server and buy a pre-configured server straight from Dell's website. I picked Dell because Dell is the most popular server to buy and they're all in data centers, hence why, why Dell is one can stick to. HP and Compact, you know, I've had dealt with them in the past, but Dell is so much more easier. They're box builders, so all that Dell is interested in is building decent kits to get out there f um, for people to use, and they are a decent bit of kit as well. Warranty is really good on it as well, and everything fits so uh, seamline. Dell comes with its own startup software, you can, so you can put into all the software, then it tells you what to, when to put in operating system. It does all the partitioning and, and loads all the drivers for Windows Server itself, after which is really nice. And some of these actually do work with um, virtual server, which we'll talk about virtual server coming up in the next couple of videos as well, um, where you can virtualize the server so you can create multiple environments inside one bit of hardware. So, because obviously, when the reason why I say that is any server in a company they don't always neutralize 100% of the processor or the memory of a physical server. So you've got 15 users on a typical box like this, 16 gigs of RAM, um, quad core inside then you'll find you'll never use all that in one great big go. So th then you're wasting half the hardware, hence why virtualization is the next best thing. You can virtualize the environments. You can even build test environments inside that so you can test stuff before you make it live as well and it won't affect any of the service performance itself. And you can segment the, the, the disk and the, the memory down into virtual environments. So if one server crashes inside the environment, it doesn't crash the whole lot out, it isolates it. So, and also it's easy to move a virtual server from one server to another without causing any problems whatsoever. If you ever tried installing Windows on this directly and then, then move this to another Dell server that's slightly different spec, it causes a lot of problems because it wants to plug and play the motherboard, drivers, and it can all get, you can get in all sorts of trouble with it and it's not, it's not nice. The thing you've got to remember when you build servers, your recovery time has got to be as quick as possible. So running a virtual server on this, so if you buy it, if you had a second box like this, it literally will take you like 30 minutes or so, depends on the drive you've got, what, what, what you back it up onto. You can move the virtual environment from this machine to the next one, power up, and you're done within the hour and stuff. And it's better to rely on the backup because you're physically moving the files off of here. So long as the disks are not corrupted, it's easy to move the files off onto another one, get right up and running as well. And also, if you've got two boxes like this you brought, it's easier to run both environments on both boxes, keeping one as a standby, not plugged into the network. So you can then quickly take the files, restore it over there really quickly, back up and running really quickly. Um, so you limited downtime, then you can get somebody out here to repair this server, and away you go. So if you look at my cheaper options, so I'll keep this video short, I want to keep the videos down to about 10 minutes each, so uh, I'm not going to be talking too long about it, because obviously we will get to the point on this as well. So this is the expensive way of doing it. Dell, for a decent box like Dell, so if you've got a short server, one U rack, so this is great, you can stack them all up in a, in a rack itself, or they can actually be stuck on the bench as long as the room's nice and cold, because the server likes being cold. Uh, same with when you build a, a, a cheap box, room temperature cold, it will last longer for you. So boxes like this uh, probably set you back about, depending on the spec on it, I mean, I expect these up to nearly 2,000 pounds spend on them. Comes with one year warranty, which is next business day. You can extend the warranty for four hour response time, which basically means something happens within the four hours, you phone Dell, four hours later, they turn on site. But if you do it through middle of the day, say about three o'clock-ish, and you've got a server gone down, you phone them, they won't be out till next morning, first thing in the morning. They normally t ask you to tell you what's up with it, they'll ask you to run some diagnostics, so when you install these, you install the diagnostic partition, which you can run through and it tests all the hardware out, so then it tells Adele on the phone what parts to bring out when they come to site and stuff. So they're quite good on that one. So um, yeah, that's the warranty side, really nice. And you can extend the warranty each year uh, and keep it going. 
So you can spend about two grand on the, on on a single box like this, depending on the spec. Uh, I've spec these up to at least a thousand pound because they'll do deals from time to time, which is really good. They normally knock about three or four hundred pounds off. They're the ones to look to go for as well. You're going to buy um, if you can afford redundancy, and you've got like um, a, a four or five grand um, budget in mind, um, and that's for the whole network. Then obviously you need to go uh, and build uh, one built. So we'll talk about it in a sec. But if you've got an open budget for a server, say a thousand pound or server on this, you can get this for a thousand pounds. I buy these as standard, so I, I get minimal disk in there. So this, these are hold, these hold two drives. To get two mirror disks, low spec as possible. Sit lowest memory in it, but go for the the CPU, the highest spec CPU and the most cores. Uh, and then when you get it, I then replace these drives with two new drives that I buy from like scan.co.uk or from ebuy.co.uk, it's much cheaper. They um, will charge you normally £400 a disc if you've got two terabytes to go in here. But where if you buy from scan, you can get that under 100 quid each. Same with the mem memory. They will easy uh, f um, charge you three to £400 for RAM, where you can buy this from um, uh, Memory Online, um, the same brand that Dell uses, a lot cheaper, and you can get a lot more, so you can really maximise this out anyway. So we'll go into more details of it later on if you want more questions. Um, and I'll sh we'll show you the Dell website uh, on another video sometime sort of show how you can spec it up and see what's going. So that's the that's this expensive way of building it. Now the cheapest way of building it is there's two that you can buy a server motherboard, only a gigabyte one of the brands is gigabyte that do server motherboards and they start at two hundred and ninety three pounds plus fat but does not include CPU or RAM, that's extra and they're unique. Those motherboards will actually work with um, Windows Server, Microsoft Windows Server or VMware and stuff, you know, uh, they're compatible with it. But I found a cheaper way of doing it, and so I'm one, one I'm doing at the moment. You can buy a normal case like this, 40 quid, you can get sometimes get the smaller cases, a bit taller, 15 pounds. Um, inside, I just buy a normal spec gigabyte motherboard, AS Rock, um, as long as it's, I go for the maximum memory the board can take, so they take 16 gigs of RAM. Um, you can put an iCore 5 or iCore 7 in there, so the, the, the best process you can get, the better and uh, ma uh, maximize this RAM, and also these will take SSD drives. SSD drives, solid state disk drives, much faster on booting and running, because it run like 400 megabytes per second compared to like an 18 megabytes per second on a normal standard hard drive. Um, so all we'll do is build this up, 16 gig of RAM, so much, stick an ISO core seven chip in it, so you can spend at least, say 300 pounds on this for, the, for that sort of spec. Two SSD drives running mirror, or if you can afford three SSD drives, go for about 500 gigabyte each uh, in there, uh, and then raid that up basically if you can. Install Windows 10 on this. Um, the reason why I install Windows 10 because then you can buy what you call a VM Workstation um, Pro, the Pro Edition, it's about 200 pounds. That will allow you to run um, virtual environments inside. So in theory, this box could hold a good decent spec for virtual servers. So that'd be enough to kind of file and print, database server, and an exchange email, and maybe a couple of smaller ones that can run sort of like workstations, or can be sort of a, uh, like a, a, a development environment, so you can test things before you roll it out live. And this will, ha will handle it pretty well as well. Even on a slow, low spec, uh, a Pentium 4, dual core, you could probably get run a two virtual servers on this box. And um, because you could probably get this under, say, 600 pounds, much more cheaper than the Dell option itself. Um, keep the virtual environments much more easier to recover as well, faster to recover. And you can always put a two terabyte storage drive, normal drive in here, run the virtual site, run the operating system on the SSD drive to make it super quick, and then use the other drive, the external storage as well, which you can then combine that within the virtual workstation itself, nice and easy. Then you can add like, they all come, always go for dual network cards because you want the network card to be, you want the machine to be fast on the network, always go dual network card, and we'll talk about network cards and gigabits a bit later on in another video as well. So this is just an overall what to go for. So we'll, we'll talk about, when we, when we talk about this network, we'll, we'll consider that the cheap version in mind all the time, and we'll also talk about the Dell a bit later on as well. So this is what I would go for. And then I've got some servers I've run at home at the moment, and I'm, which runs on the Dells, because they're getting old now. Um, I'm not gonna be spending a thousand pound on a Dell. I'm gonna use a thousand pound to buy a um, couple of these boxes. For a grand, I can buy, buy three of these machines, quite high spec, running the virtual environments that these would run as well. 
and I can probably do some low balancing stuff in between all that, which again we'll talk about in a later video. So that's a very quick overview of what's server-wise. I'm going to go a bit more detail on it a bit later as well. And these will handle 15, 20, and if you've got the like, iCore 7 processor in it, you can probably actually have like two, 300, even 1,000 users connecting to these boxes. Quite nice. And I can also teach you how to create load balancing between them and, and stuff like that. Again, that, that's all advanced stuff we can talk about at a later date. But to keep this really, really sort of down, down, uh, those, if you've got a good budget, and again, you, if it's warranty, you won't have to worry about the warranty because they will we'll sort that out for you. If it's a crash, they can come out and replace parts. It's all part of the warranty. With this one, you would have to buy another another board and swap it about. Because the motherboards are cheap to buy, easy. Um, if you've got several, a couple of these, you can use them as low balancing. So you can take one offline, repair it, pull it back online as well. Again, with the virtual workstations, as long as the data is safe on the hard drive, you can take the hard drive out. You can use any hardware in there because the virtual workstation will hide the operating system to say exactly what hardware it's sitting on so you don't have all this plug and play issues as well. So it's nice and easy and quick as well. And if you've got two of these boxes built, very quickly before we end this video, you've got two of these boxes built, it's easy. You can take that drive out, put it into that drive, boot, straight back up and running again. Again, downtime, really fast and super quick. Um, you can do the same with the Dell, as long as you've got two exactly identical Dells, you can take the hard drive out of one, put it in the other one, boot back up again. So long as there's no disk failure or disk errors or there's a bug in the operating system, it's easy as moving the drive out, put it into the other one, back up and running again. So hardware failures, we can sort easy. So this is the option I'm going for, this is the option I'm replacing my servers with. Um, the next video we'll do, we'll talk about networks and we'll also talk about um, the, uh, I'll show you my servers, what I've got and what I'm using them for to give you an idea. So that's just something to con consider about. Again, a low budget, go for this. Even if you've got a big budget, I think this would be ideal. So you can buy, where you buy one server for say just under two grand for a really high spec, you can buy probably about three or four of these machines. Again, we'll do a video where we talk about, um, sorry about that, noise outside, let it pass over. But another, we will talk about the actual spec, um, and I'll probably in the video here, I'll put an example of what spec the, my, my one is, and compared to Dell, and then we'll do costs, so we do today's costs against both of those. So look at the comments below, and I have all the details there for you as well. So I hope this is a bit of an eye-opener. Uh, so next we'll talk about, about the network, and how to link two buildings together as well. So if you've got users in one building, uh, users in another building, we can, we can show you how you can link the, the buildings together so they're all on the same network and the network is super fast. So thanks for watching guys, remember to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and see you soon guys. Yeah.